All right, so now we have um, talked about this real number system joining with the imaginary numbers and becoming the complex number system. So all of our complex numbers will come in the form of a some number plus, and then we have an imaginary part. Okay, so now we've, we've introduced this thing I, this BI, but we need to know what it is. Okay, the imaginary unit denoted by this I is defined as the number whose square is negative 1. Very fancy way to say I squared equals negative 1. This is something that you have to know. You just, you have to memorize it. Now, if I squared is negative 1, then if we were to take the square root of both sides, I would have to equal the square root of negative 1. Again, this is another thing that we just have to memorize. So you're going to have actually a list of four things whenever we're done with this section that you have to know off the top of your head. So I equals the square root of negative 1. I squared equals negative 1. Those are your first two uh, in that list of four things that we're going to create. Okay, so let's see how in the world this will help us uh, in looking at problems. So let's go through this example. Here we have, um, first of all, this says write each of the following as a pure imaginary number. Now when we talk about pure imaginary numbers, we're talking about just uh, the BI part. Uh, we're not talking, you know, it, remember it said that all of our complex numbers come in the form of A plus BI. If we just have this part, it's called the pure imaginary. Whenever we join it with the real part is whenever we really talk about it as being a truly complex number. Okay, so if we're going to write this as an imaginary number, let's just pretend that we did not have that negative there. If we just saw the square root of 16, then we would say, oh, well, the square root of 16 is 4. But, because of that negative there, in a way, it's as if you are breaking this up into 16 times negative 1, and then taking the square root of each one. Remember us doing that with the other square roots? So the square root of 16 would be 4, and the square root of negative 1, by definition, is i. So this would be 4i. Now, we can look at it also, if we see the square root of negative 16 or something similar, if you understand that that negative is going to create an i, you can just work with the number part and then tack the i on at the end. So we could look at this and say, okay, let's ignore the negative for a minute. The square root of 16 would be 4, and then because we had that negative, we have to tack on the i. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to ignore this negative for a minute and just look at the square root of 3. Well, the square root of 3 cannot be broke down any further. There are not two things that multiply together to get 3, and one of them is a perfect square. So really and truly, we just have to leave this as the square root of 3. But that negative part, that's what creates the i. So I'm going to tack the i on at the end. So our answer would be the square root of 3, i. Now the i is not underneath the radical. That's very important. You have to make sure that you are outside of the radical before you put in your i. Hugely important. Okay, what about this one? Here again, let's just ignore that we're working with the negative. If we just had the 18, then we would say that would be 9 times 2, and we would take the square root of each one of those. And then we would say, well, the square root of 9 is 3, and we can't do anything with the square root of 2, so we have to leave it. But because we had that negative underneath the radical, we have to tack on the i at the end. So this would be 3 square roots of 2, i.